welcome to another exciting episode of Daddy Issues. I'm one of your hosts, Craig Jakes. I'm Don Trutler, and uh, thanks for tuning in. And, and today and I'm Deb we, Whitkett. Uh, sorry. No, no, you weren't on screen yet, so I was figuring we could. There you are. Okay, sorry. So Can we do, is that a do-over? No. No, you're gonna edit that. Okay. They don't yeah. edit this. Come on now. This is Deb Whitkiss. She works at Parks Place here in Bells Falls, and uh, she works for Greater Falls Prevention. Uh, no, Greater Falls, Greater Falls Connections. Connections. And my, uh, yes. my title is Parent Outreach Coordinator for Greater Falls Connections. And there were two subjects that we know she's passionate about. One is, you know, substance abuse, which we had talked about, but the other one seems to be bullying and the effects mm -hmm. of bullying on children and how to handle it. And so Don and I. We've mentioned on the show before the Coffee Connection Parenting Group, and Deb runs that group. Mm -hmm. And we thought this would be a good episode to have her come in, and we could talk about bullying and issues surrounding bullying. Mm -hmm. Thank and, you. And why are you interested in bullying? What got you interested? Uh, well, I, I guess as um, a bully. No, <laughs> no um, I. Uh, well, first of all, I have to say, when I was a kid, I was bullied, so I know I can identify with those who are um, bullied. As a parent, I had a child who was bullied, and as an educator, um, I got to see it firsthand what it looks like in the classroom um, for those who are doing the bullying and those who are the targets. Um, and I think the reason why I've developed an interest in it is because um, in my work, I listen a lot um, to parents. And I know it's an issue that many parents are very concerned about. Absolutely. And, and I think what also um, fuels this um, concern that parents have is the fact that it has changed. It is not the same as it was when we were kids. Um, because of our, uh, how digitally connected mm. we are, um, bullying looks very different and it can be persistent. Cyberbullying. It, yes, it, it's we have not to refer to it as cyberbullying. Yeah. And when we were kids, um, if you were bullied, I was, when I was bullied at school, I could go home and, and be safe. Not, and be safe, exactly. I, my neighborhood was safe, um, my home was safe. And so I had a respite. I had um, a, a safe place to, you know, breathe. And I had people to talk to. I had a chance to um, process. I had people, you know, um, to support me. I could feel like, oh, wait a second, you know, I'm I'm really cool in my neighborhood with all my friends in my neighborhood. So it must be the kids at school. So it's not like that anymore. And I, I also think um, so. There's that whole digital element. You can get mm -hmm. text. I, I've heard of kids getting, you know, texts at two o'clock in the morning. Um, I've heard of kids who've been, um, you know, targeted on Facebook. Um, mm -hmm. And so um, that's why parents are more concerned because it is so um, much more um, likely to occur 24-7. Uh, but the other thing, which I think I'd like to hear your opinions about, is mm -hmm. I really think our culture has changed. I, I think that, um, you know, even if you look at some episodes of Sesame Street, you know, with, you know, we've got, you know, toddlers um, watching Sesame Street. Sesame Street even now has um, characters that are sarcastic. Uh -huh. um, yes, and it's supposed to be humor, but, you know, often it is, um, you know, um, I feel like it's starting to plant the roots of, like, let's be critical of each other. Let's, you know, and I know Sesame does a lot of great things, but mm -hmm. the fact that that sarcasm has become such a part of um, our culture, I, I really uh, think that it perpetuates a culture of, of meanness and all our media. Um, all of the movies that our kids are exposed to, and we as adults, you know, we seek out uh, often our, you know, um, movies that um, where there are, um, you know, a whole culture of um, bullying, and we look at it as humor. And um, I, you know, I just think we owe it to our kids to. Um, um, that's look really at those that's critically. really interesting. Yeah, and you know, when there's uh, one of my favorite bands, I mm -hmm. saw them a couple weeks ago. Uh, they have a song. I don't remember which mm -hmm. one it is, but he said. Um, Words, what is it? Words, words for hate and words for fun. Mm -hmm. You know, they've just become one. Mm -hmm. That basically we can't tell the difference anymore. Mm -hmm. well, um, I've got you know one of my best mm -hmm. friends who you know will text me, call me, will you know throw out some of that stuff. And, mm -hmm. and, and I don't know, maybe you could talk to this, you know, Craig. That uh, you know, sometimes men, mm -hmm. even as friends, mm -hmm. the way we mm -hmm. we 
we talk to each other mm -hmm. has that we making fun of each other or mm -hmm. busting Absolutely. each other's chops. And mm -hmm. I would say, you know, for me, mm -hmm. I believe that the male culture, mm -hmm. like just as men, that's the way friends are with each other. It's like mm -hmm. I always bust on my friends. Of course, to be fair, I treat female friends the same. I'll mm -hmm. make jokes about them, but I also get it in return. It's a mm -hmm. give and take. It's not... But I think that that's a very man thing to do because you don't see a lot of women walking up to each other going, Heather, you cow. You know, mm -hmm. guys will be like, oh, you stupid son of a, you know, that's a guy mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. You don't hear that as much from the women, it seems mm -hmm. like. But again, that goes back to even when men are angry with each other, I had mm -hmm. mentioned before, I, mm -hmm. you know, guys are the type that they'll just walk up to each other if there's a problem, punch each other in the face. Ten minutes later, they can sit down and have a beer and it's like, water under the bridge mm -hmm. you know where it seems like and again this is my mm -hmm. opinion it's a generalization sure but that you know women tend to hold on to things longer in general than mm -hmm. men do men it's like okay i've punched you my aggression's gone let's mm -hmm. go have a beer women it's the whole you know that's the woman that called me fat two years ago this thursday it's the anniversary you right. know it's like wow get over it you know but, you know, what we were saying about kind of a culture of, of meanness, yeah. um, mm -hmm. one of the things that, that, that I saw several, several years ago, there's a, there was a film called Wrestling with Manhood, mm -hmm. and it was talking about the professional wrestling. It's a documentary about mm -hmm. the professional wrestling culture. And one of the things that uh, they had pointed out, and I had kind of gotten out of professional mm -hmm. wrestling since, since I was a kid. You know, I they didn't used know to you have, were a professional mm -hmm. wrestler. The Iron Sheik. Oh, <laughs> they used to have, um, oh, I'm trying to think what their, what their names were. Andre the Giant. Andre the that, Giant. That's my Andre time. Andre the Giant. That was Chief my... J. Strongbow. Oh, See, that's yes, past, I remember That's him. past my time. Yeah. I, I, or that's before my time. <laughs> my time was more like the early 80s, you know, mm, beginning right. of the first WrestleMania. Uh -huh. Andre the Giant, Iron Sheik, Hulk Hogan. Mm -hmm. Um, up to Coco Beware mm -hmm. and Jimmy Superfly Snooka. <laughs> well, exactly. And you know what? It, you know what they pointed out mm -hmm. is that, and I hadn't seen, been watching professional wrestling or paying mm -hmm. attention to it for years and years. But it pointed out um, how there's a lot of uh, bullying mm -hmm. that goes on. Mm -hmm. There's a well, lot it's all of stereotypes uh, too. Homophobia. Mm -hmm. There's mm -hmm. a lot of. Uh, I'm trying to think what the what the word is for. Um, um, Men that don't like women. What do they call that? Um, Sex. Well, no. Sex. Hem, what's, it starts with an M. Oh, misogynistic. Misogynistic. Yes. Call in. Help Don with words. <laughs> but exactly. Well, I, I want well, She's um, smart. She brought respond? a computer. She can look yeah. up words. No, I did. That misogynistic was not there. I just that <laughs> that one came to my. It was in mind. your head. Yeah, um, but I just wanted to um, briefly address um, some of the gender um, issues that you're talking about right now. Um, and there is some research that actually um, shows that, in fact, um, um, girls and boys have different um, patterns of, of bullying. And uh, personally, myself, I think it is related um, um, to some of our anthropological roots, where men were hunters and gatherers, very physical mm -hmm. um, um, and immediate. And um, women who stayed home and stayed in, back in the bush and gathered, um, that was a very um, mo much more complex relationship built activity so it makes a lot of sense that you would see along gender gender lines very specific types mm -hmm. of bullying which i'd like to um, 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 talk about oh yeah um, i think we should just put a, a definition out there there is no one definition um, there are some good ones um, there are some that need room for improvement um, i actually got um, the definition from the wyndham northeast supervisory union um, on their website if you're looking for information about how they um, address bullying, they actually have a wonderful um, policy and procedures around bullying. But I just wanted to share their um, definition because I think it's important to understand the difference between bullying and harassment. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, this is not necessarily black and white, so we do need some guidance with this. So um, bullying is defined as an overt act or combination of acts, um, including um, an act conducted by electronic means, um, directed against a student or another student or a group of students, um, in which um, it is repeated over time. It is intended to ridicule, ridicule humiliate, or intimidate the student. Um, and it can happen um, during the school day on school property or on the bus or at a school-sponsored activity. 
and um, it also could not occur, occur on school property or on school time. Um, but um, there, uh, or whether or not um, students have the right to access educational programs, I'm not exactly sure what that means. But anyhow, so their definition, it's repeated. Um, it's for the purpose of um, humiliating, um, in intimidating. This is a really good place to start. Mm -hmm. um, I would have to say this could use some work. Um, because there are other um, schools of thought around um, bullying because sometimes a bullying can be situational. New girl at school. Yep. You know, something that could happen, you know, for a short period of time, um, circumstantial, something happened um, to a kid at school and then, pff, you know, there's kind of a feeding frenzy. So I would have to say this could be expanded upon more because the research is telling us now, sometimes it doesn't fit the, pardon me, the um, qualification repeated, but it could be situational or circumstantial. Well, an example that mm -hmm. I have, I'm not sure if we mentioned it, on, if I told the story on the show in a previous mm -hmm. episode, but it fits. My oldest son mm -hmm. is 13, but when he was in kindergarten, mm -hmm. he was on the bus and there was another student who was mm -hmm. bigger than him mm -hmm. that was taking his school bag mm -hmm. and rifling through it to find things to make hits. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and now I'm sure, I, knowing what I know about you, Deb, mm -hmm. this isn't probably the way you would have chose to handle it, but mm -hmm. what I did was I told him, I was like, you can't just let this happen. You mm -hmm. have to stand up for yourself. Mm -hmm. And he was afraid of getting in trouble, and I was like, no, you need to defend mm -hmm. yourself because other kids are mm -hmm. seeing that mm -hmm. this kid is getting away with it, and then mm -hmm. they're gonna, it's kind of like a wolf pack, you know? Mm -hmm. they'll, they'll all just- Pack mentality. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I said, you need to defend yourself, and after, you know, a straight week of mm -hmm. this happening every single day, mm -hmm. all of a sudden that Friday, this is back when I was still with mm -hmm. his mother, mm -hmm. we were uh, waiting at the bus stop for him and he runs right past mm -hmm. us mm -hmm. to the kid's mom mm -hmm. and the kid's running behind him yelling, no, you don't have to say anything to her. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what's going on? He runs up to the kid's mom, he goes, just so you know, I punched your son in the nose because he mm -hmm. was trying to steal my stuff. Mm -hmm. And I know that's not the way you would necessarily advise a mm -hmm. kid to handle it, mm -hmm. but honestly, I felt pride in the fact that he's like, no, you're mm -hmm. not gonna take my stuff, well, pow. I think it's really important to teach our kids to stand up for themselves. Um, usually these kids are, you know, if, they're be if your child is being targeted, it's for a reason, they're feeling vulnerable. Um, and um, I think it really is important. While I would not necessarily agree that it, the resolution be physical, I would have well, to the say- the other kid was willing to get physical. So yeah, that, right, like, right, right. But then if you you're the up... only pacifist in the group, you're gonna get a broken nose. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, um, we can stand up to bullies with our words and with our actions without, this is just, as I said, an opinion. Often if you wind up getting into a physical fight, um, then it becomes that both you know parties are wrong. Um, so I think, but I think um, part of um, addressing bullying is giving our kids the skills um, and also um, um, cre you know using these um, incidents like this to be proactive. To you know, if there's a problem on the bus, let's start addressing that. Let's make e let's make sure that there's like real adequate supervision and monitoring going on, so we can send a message to the kids. This behavior is totally unacceptable. Well, let me ask this question. Sure. You know, how effective is it for a kid mm -hmm. that's being bullied to go to an authority figure mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. kind of, uh, mm -hmm. I would, to, to look for help? I it, it's totally ineffective. In, uh, I mean, it, okay. it, it can happen, but it doesn't work. And I, you know, I, I'm, I'm guessing the, that's why you asked that question. Yeah, as someone that mm -hmm. had been bullied in mm -hmm. elementary school, mm -hmm. the person who went to the teacher to complain mm -hmm. about it, right then got extra harassed when the teacher mm -hmm. had to leave the room for something mm -hmm. because, mm -hmm. you know, how dare you be a right. tattletale, you right. know, or a snitch. Right. Of course, I'm a large guy. I didn't uh -huh. get bullied much mm -hmm. past fourth grade because mm -hmm. it turns out that, you know, again, I believe in self-defense and mm -hmm. it, that doesn't necessarily mean I had to wait to throw the second punch. It's mm -hmm. like, no, if you're coming at me aggressively, mm -hmm. that first punch is self-defense. But even be, even beyond that, even beyond the retribution that would come from mm -hmm. from the bullies for, right. um, I don't know, I was going to say tattletaling, but that's kind of a negative way. But for reporting the, right. the whatever incident, do the do the children do they feel like they're getting um, the adequate help that they're asking well, for? Well, I, I think that what I have noticed and need to recognize is that um, schools across the country are 
you know, stepping up or being forced to deal with, take this on way in a way more serious way, specifically because it's gone cyber. And, and we have kids who are killing themselves, kids who are thinking about, you know, killing themselves, kids who don't want to go to school and start failing or start, start self-medicating because they can't face school. So they are coming up with, mm -hmm. um, you know, first and foremost, policies. Within this policy here, um, you know, specifically um, at the WNESU, um, this explains exact procedures and what um, students' rights are, what, what parents' rights are, um, and um, so this is a start, um, but I think they are also have gotten very creative. So instead of you know the old-fashioned kind of tattletale, tell the adult, they've come up with um, anonymous ways um, to report incidents, such as at the middle school now they're actually um, they have an app for that um, where you can text, um, so it remains anonymous, and um, you know, um, so therefore you're saving face, you're saving yourself from being the retribution. Um, but I think more importantly, I mean, I think all this stuff is great, but I think it's so important for us to create cul the culture of kindness, the culture of, um, you know, if you see something, it, the onus cannot be on the child being bullied because they are vulnerable and they are the most likely to be victimized. So we have to have the whole school or the whole community for that matter because in fact bullying just doesn't take place at school. In fact now, you know, because it's gone viral and digital, um, bullying actually takes um, place more outside of schools. Mm -hmm. So we have to come together as a community on this and educate ourselves. Absolutely. And, and there are so many things we can educate ourselves about. Number one, our rights. Number one, what are the resources here in the community? We actually have um, Thaddeus Buckley, who is the juvenile um, officer um, for the Bellas Falls Police Department. He's very committed to this issue. You give him a call and he will come and he will listen and, and he will tell you what your rights are because this is now, the laws are changing. This actually can be a crime mm -hmm. that um, you can, you know, um, have to um, be held responsible for, you know, with legal consequences. Um, I wow. believe, yeah. I heard recently in California, mm -hmm. uh, I can't remember what city it was in, but they are, they passed a law where the parents will be mm -hmm. held legally responsible for their children mm -hmm. bullying. Mm -hmm. It's like the first time it's a fine, but if it keeps happening, the mm -hmm. parents can face jail time for not being... Right. In con you know, keeping control of their right. children's behavior and yeah. like dealing with that at home because mm -hmm. unfortunately there's a lot of lethargic parents that just sit back and sometimes they're the cause of the well, bullying I, okay. by their children. You know? I, I, I personally, I think the more we get police involved, um, this is my personal opinion and I believe maybe there's even some research out there suggests that the more we result, re resort to policing our lives, Mm -hmm. the less effective we're going to get. Like I said, when this, there are, in, there are situations, like I know a kid who was burnt with a cigarette by a child bullying, and that's physical abuse, um, and that should be taken care of legally. But I really believe, you know, um, parents do need to be held responsible and engaged, not necessarily through the legal system. But what can we do to change this family, whether it be they're not, you know, they have no idea that their kids are bullying? Because it's not always the kids at risk. In well, fact, there's, there's um, kids who are most likely to get away with um, the bullying are from families who are, have a lot of resources and mm -hmm. might be the most popular kids at school. Well, and I've actually, mm -hmm. you know, seen some information mm -hmm. online and stuff about where some of these bullies, mm -hmm. their home life, mm -hmm. there, there's so many issues there that mm -hmm. lead them down the road of sure. being a bully because maybe they are made to feel very mm -hmm. small at right. home mm -hmm. and at school right. or online is where they can finally be the right. one that's, you know, coming out on mm -hmm. top in these mm -hmm. situations because maybe their parents are, you know, have alcohol issues mm -hmm. or are abusive in mm -hmm. some way or older brothers who, you know, there's a lot of times where the family life is mm -hmm. not really pleasant for these mm -hmm. bullies, mm -hmm. you know, and I think that, you know, societally, that's mm -hmm. a big issue too. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, there's not as much that the school can do about the kid's home life unless it crosses the line where they have to report it to like DCF or something. Mm -hmm. Now, are there any statistics? I mean, when, when mm -hmm. people talk, uh, 
if you were to interview mm -hmm. most adults, would mm -hmm. almost uh, would there be a huge? Seems like there'd be a huge percentage mm -hmm. of folks that would say they've been bullied throughout the course of their life. I have read those statistics. <laughs> I cannot. Uh, they do not necessarily. I can't remember the, the numbers right now, and I apologize for that. Um, but what I can tell you is, um, you are correct in saying there are um, populations that are. Um, because of certain risk factors are more vulnerable and there are also populations of those who are more likely to bully and I, I think the more we understand this as um, This is about us and we and the culture that we're raising our kids in um, versus bad kids good kids um, um, and or good families and bad families. I think it's really important. The more we do that, if we use that mentality, what we wind up doing is polar, continuing to polarize community members. And um, but maybe I should just list a few of the risk factors here, if sure. that's okay. Sure. Okay. And um, bullying does have two common themes. Number one, hate. And um, whether it's um, misappropriated, you know, instead of hating yourself, maybe you're hated at home. So you or you feel that you know your things are tough at home. So you go into school mm -hmm. and you project it outward. Well, to that point, mm -hmm. Hitler proved that. I mm -hmm. mean, what did he consider to be the perfect person? Tall, blonde, mm -hmm. blue-eyed. Mm -hmm. He was shorter, mm -hmm. brown hair, brown mm -hmm. eyes. Mm -hmm. It was definitely a self-hating thing with a lot of mm -hmm. you know what he looked up to as mm -hmm. the perfect mm -hmm. human. You know, mm -hmm. so I mean, that's obviously a much bigger scale right. than, you know, schoolyard shoving, mm -hmm. but I mean, the point's still kind of the same. Mm -hmm. If you're, you know, if there's aggression going on at home, of course, your kid's going to bring that to school. But the other thing is, which is way less subtle, and, and you know, from my experience with my own daughter was um, very um, hurtful and painful for her, was um, relational aggression, um, or um, what you see um, a lot of girls nowadays do. Um, it's very, um, what they refer to is uh, covert um, bullying versus Don't overt, let them in the group. which is, you know, punching, yeah, exclusion, oh, ignoring, yeah, that's a big one. Um, gossip, rumors said, um, spreading, that type of thing. But that, um, what they refer to is, um, so there's kind of hate, self-hate, aggression type of stuff. But then there's um, um, power, an imbalance of power. And that's probably the most important piece of um, bullying that we don't pay enough attention to because... For some kids at risk, this is about what's going on at home. Um, for other kids, this is about, you know, I'm going to get my power by taking your power away. And that tends to be, um, you know, more of the um, covert bullying. So um, let me just get, I'm sorry if I'm all no, over no, no. the place here. But um, so children um, at risk being bullied, number one, kids on IEPs and 504s. They are, their rates of being bullied are much higher. And I, I always, I, you know, that's something that just drives me crazy, um, the fact that targets are picked because they're easier. Um, locally or statewide here, we have the Vermont Family Network that is very active in engaging, supporting, and educating um, families who have, who have kids on IEPs or 504s because well, they are the most vulnerable population. That, so. lead, no, that, that led me to a question. Uh -huh. um, so does that seem to fit into the idea that I've had where mm -hmm. It's anyone that's kind of in it's in a group that's different from the rest. Oh, absolutely. You know what I mean? Absolutely. It's like, absolutely. you know, whether it's kids in special ed or mm -hmm. kids in whatever, um, um, you know what yeah, I mean? Different sexual orientation, um, uh, different um, religious or cultural beliefs. Uh, let's see, part of a different racial group. And all of those would actually qualify as harassment. Mm. Um, because those are group, special groups that are protected um, um, underneath... Um, the um, ID, no, no, not the IDA, but that our Constitution, um, and also uh, let's see. This is this is something you might buy, find um, surprising. Is is actually uh, kids who are popular that are getting a lot of positive attention may in fact have the group turn on them. Oh yeah, um, and that the movie Mean Girls was all yes, about that. Yes, 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 yes. Um, I mean, let's it, see. I know it's a comedy, but it actually had some valid points when it came to that behavior. Yes. Um, let's see. Being new to a school, uh, here's oh, one I that, know I, that one. You know, did was that? Yeah. I was I was new uh, many times. Uh, so so was I was I, walking yes. in, and I got mm -hmm. used to it. I got used to walking in, being yeah. the new, new guy, guy, and having yeah. people, uh, you know, want to pick on me. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, and here's one right here that I see a lot here um, in this community. I'm just going to put it right out there because there is a huge socioeconomic um, gap here, but. Um, 
uh, and I've witnessed this a lot in the community, is uh, bullying related to kids who can't afford to wear the right clothes or have the mm. right shoes or participate in the right um, events because of lack of money. I've heard that is the reason behind mm -hmm. some people being supportive of you know school uniforms in mm -hmm. places because mm -hmm. that way you know the family's income level doesn't mm -hmm. really show if everyone's wearing the same uniform. Mm -hmm. I I personally like freedom of expression to you know mm -hmm. not have to wear the uniform but mm -hmm. you know I have heard that mm -hmm. as a you know reason for it. Mm -hmm. Um, let's see. Also, um, kids, um, kids who are on IEPs who have difficult, like negotiation, nego negotiating social skills, mm -hmm. who might have impulse control issues or delayed gratification issues that make it hard for them to maintain and sustain friendships. They're also targets, and they also may, um, you know, participate in bullying because they don't fit in. So it's, 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 it's not this black and white, it's very complex. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you may be the victim, next week you may do, be doing the, right. the bullying. Well, that kind of brings up a question that kind of, this kind of refers to a story mm -hmm. that we were talking about before mm -hmm. we got in the air about that uh, young guy that went on a killing spree in California and stuff like that. But mm -hmm. are there mm -hmm. kids mm -hmm. that are begging to be bullied? Is there a certain population of kids that are they're, they're almost like a magnet for it? Well, see, just for my no, no, no. I, I, it just made, I wanted to spit uh -huh. out my opinion quick, but um, I would say it goes back to I was saying like the you know the wolf pack mentality mm. kind of thing. It's same kind of thing. It's like they smell the weakest in the herd, mm -hmm. and sometimes they do, and that's why they pick mm -hmm. the groups that are different from everyone mm -hmm. else. You know, it's like. Oh, he's different. That's going to make him, we you know, yep. weaker than the rest. So that's mm -hmm. who they're going to attack. But the thing is, what I noticed mm -hmm. in high school when I was there mm -hmm. um, is a lot of the bullying mm -hmm. was more ignoring. It's like the nerdier kids mm -hmm. weren't so much beat up or anything. Mm -hmm. It's just the jocks didn't know who they were and mm -hmm. didn't and couldn't have cared less, and mm -hmm. they took it personal. And it's like, well when you have your own clique, you're not really looking to mm -hmm. like look at the other groups. Mm -hmm. Honestly, the people that I saw bully the, each other the most mm -hmm. were the jocks that would bully each other mm -hmm. in the you know man way you were discussing mm -hmm. earlier where it's like that's how men... I think some of the stuff that the football players did to each other was mm -hmm. so much more heinous than the stuff that you hear in the news, you mm -hmm. know? Um, but those other kids felt because they were ignored. Mm -hmm. I heard a story. Uh, Adam Carolla, had, the comedian, had mentioned on his podcast about his son coming home, and he claimed he had been bullied that day at mm -hmm. school when he was six because he was talking to a friend, and his friend did this, la 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 la, and to him that was bullying. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, that's kind of an extreme circumstance to consider it bullying. You know, it's like, well, I, I, think I, that, I don't think that's, I think that's on the why level. It helps to have some. Um, uh, there's unacceptable, inappropriate behaviors. There's teasing. There's being mean and unkind. Um, but if it if it's something that continues and it is for the purpose of humiliating some mm -hmm. someone, then that's when it needs to be taken seriously. Um, and I think that, um, like you said, there are. I, I'm really glad you did ask that question, um, Don. Um, because yeah, there's this whole mentality actually like that kid's asking for it. You know, and I think that just speaks volumes to how un insensitive we have become as a culture that we, you know, think, you know, oh, that kid. And I, I've heard teachers actually say this. I'm I was going to say, I, yeah. right, I've like, heard oh, teachers well, they're that asking have for that it. And it's just, it just, to me, it speaks volumes to the fact that we have become so insensitive. And, it, and, it, and, and perhaps maybe it also, um, number one, the disconnect is that. It's very different now. You cannot escape it. It's there 24-7. To compare and to have a, um, a perspective that you had when you were, you know, relating it back to when you were a kid and when bullying, what it was like back then, is not fair. It's totally changed. So we can't have those attitudes anymore um, because the whole nature of the problem has changed. But the, and the other thing that plays into this and why I would say that's really insensitive um, or speaks volumes to how insensitive we have become. And I'm not pointing fingers here, but I think we have to take a, uh, a real critical lens at uh, uh, who we are and um, the messages we give to our kids. But um, the other thing that's happened with kids is because we're so connected digitally, 
um, from a developmental perspective, when you are not looking someone in the eye, you do not understand that something I say to you right now, I can not interpret, you know, oh, you know, oh, Dawn has no hair. I could tweet or text that right now. See, <laughs> I didn't bring her on to bully you. That's not right. I thought that was my job anyway. <laughs> gonna say, but, um, you know, one of these the, days they're going to insist on you pattering your, your face, head, by the way. I can see in a very um, sophisticated way uh -huh. your, your physical, emotional um, action, um, response. Right. So, and as a teen, my, that part of my brain is actually rapidly developing. My mirror neurons, if I were a teen right now, I would see your facial expressions, your tone, your body language. That would inform how I have just affected someone uh, on an emotional and social level. Our kids are doing this over, you know, whether it's tweeting, Instagram, Snapchat, um, Facebook you do not get that one-on-one -on -one interaction. So you do not get to be connected to the implications of your actions. That further complicates the problem because kids don't understand. There That's, are some kids who literally don't get. You really just it caused that kid it, so much pain. It's, it's just totally dis emotionally disconnected. And that's a huge developmental piece for your mirror neurons to be having one-on-one -on -one interactions in order to grow, um, you know, uh, grow the um, sophisticated connections that are needed to be connected to each other as human beings, to understand what it means to be a human being. And it's so widespread on the internet. If you mm -hmm. go to any comment page on a website mm -hmm. or for a video on YouTube, I mean, it's all, mm -hmm. you know, horrific comments, mm -hmm. a lot of racism, because it's being done anonymously. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh, if I say that this thing is horrible mm -hmm. or say this person is unattractive or whatever, they'll mm -hmm. never know it was for me. And it's not the same as if I looked them in the eye. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, you don't think that that person's going to see that comment? Mm -hmm. or, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. that's, I mean, they call them internet trolls for mm -hmm. a reason. Like, mm -hmm. that's a whole mm -hmm. almost industry if there was a mm -hmm. paycheck involved mm -hmm. of just, it's like that's all you see on the internet. Go to any website mm -hmm. comment page and there's going to be some horrific comments being mm -hmm. made about whatever the Right, right. And it's not just know, one is. person who can oh, chime in. exactly. If you put one tweet they out pile there, on. then all of a sudden 30 of the kids that you're connected with are also chiming in. So it's not like, you know, when I had a fight with Donna Mangiacotti out on the playground in fourth grade and was being bullied by her, you know, it was just, you know, four or five kids, you know, it, was, it wasn't just one, 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 mono e mono, but it didn't turn into 30 kids, you know, involved in making, adding to it, adding comments. Mm -hmm. um, but the other thing, um, so I did mention some of the um, risks for those mm -hmm. being bullied. Uh, let's see, I just wanted to also um, mention that there are risks for those who will be bullies. Because I think, once again, we can't approach this as, um, um, you know, black or white, good or bad. Um, I know there are some studies that were done that actually identified um, kids in preschool who would grow up later to become bullies. So these behaviors, we can actually get in there early on and respond to and teach and educate or draw boundaries. So um, here are some um, risk factors for kids who are likely to bully. These are the kids that are more likely to bully. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So. Uh, Let's see. Uh, we should guess, like at the Snopes. Okay. Kids who are bigger. Uh huh. I would mm -hmm. say that. Um, mm -hmm. Kids who may uh, be mistreated at home. I really think mm -hmm. that there's a lot of bullies that, if their parents or older siblings mm -hmm. treat them horribly, they're going to take out their aggression on someone. You know, again, goes with your. Mm -hmm. They're bigger. Someone smaller than them usually because they want to feel. Mm -hmm. They want to make someone else feel the way they feel when they're at home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That would be one guess I have. Mm -hmm. um, kids who have difficulty with aggression or who are easily frustrated, um, because some, you know, there is a degree. Kids who have difficulty with aggression have impulse control issues. Mm -hmm. um, uh, kids with impulse control issues are going to act out and not think about the consequences of their actions. Also, kids who have aggressive behaviors are often um, labeled. And so in response to that, they're going to be, you know, um, look for somebody else to target. Uh, let's see, have less parental involvement. 
um, or having issues at home, like you said. Um, think badly of others. Um, less parental but, involvement, meaning less dad exactly. involvement. Exactly. Yes, That's exactly yes, what yes, I was going to yes, say, because yes, you've brought yes. up that point on earlier episodes. Right. You were talking about having a father mm -hmm. there in their life, mm -hmm. the positive effects, and you've mm -hmm. also mentioned, you know, not having a dad, some yes. of the adverse effects yes. of that. And, I mean, she just weaved right back into conversations we've already had mm -hmm. on this show. Mm -hmm. right. right. Absolutely. Yeah, so we'll I, let you continue with the list. Well, I, I could. Yeah, you. Okay. No. You were well, just proving feel him free right. to interrupt. If, if we're interrupting, we're in a conversation here, and I like that. Um, and I obviously um, talk a lot and have lots of opinions. I have no idea. I've done that. a lot of reading. She talks a lot. Has she ever watched the show? Because yeah, has she? <laughs> Uh, okay, kids who have difficulty following rules, uh, kids who um, view violence in a positive way, um, kids who have friends who um, bully others, kids who are well connected and popular. Um, how do you maintain your popularity in this culture? How do you think? Well, you're connected. You're connected to mm -hmm. you know people. Mm -hmm. You know the people mm -hmm. that are the influencers mm -hmm. that have uh, that are the, the cool kids who have mm -hmm. the connections. Mm -hmm. The kid whose uh, dad is the coach of the baseball team, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or if uh, a lot of times, like up here, I notice that mm -hmm. the teachers live in the same towns. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, mm -hmm. so that your family may know the teacher's family. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, what about you mentioned the friends of bullies? Mm -hmm. What about those that they're willing to jump in because they are worried that maybe mm -hmm. their well, like friend this, right, would turn right, on right. them this, if right. they're not this helping is, them I mean, attack this is something someone that we, weaker. That is, um, fits uh, fully in with from a developmental perspective. Mm -hmm. um, um, when kids are entering um, adolescence, um, so they're separating from their parents, they're trying to form their own identity, and they're trying to figure out where do I fit in, who do I fit in. That's a normal developmental task. And there has always been a pecking order as kids, you know, kind of um, figure out which group they identify with, you know, where, what's their standing within the group. That's normal, um, and that's kind of, you know, a, a challenging part of adolescence. Um, figuring out where you fit in, uh, who your friends are, who's going to accept you, who's not going to accept you. It's an important um, task that needs to be established. So can we teach our children, so, <laughs> yeah. you know, in order to help them avoid being bullied, mm -hmm. would we teach them to blend in, mm. to conform? I don't know. Not if, necessarily. Well, I don't know if you know who, mm. uh, what's his name, Brad Williams. He's very a, provocative, Don. He's a <laughs> comedian who does not like the term little person for what he is. He actually mm -hmm. says the word midget, which mm -hmm. gets the little person community up in arms against him, even though mm -hmm. he's one of their own. But he was saying his father, mm -hmm. before he ever started school, would make jokes to him. And when he mm -hmm. started to get upset, he's like, no, hit me back. Because he mm -hmm. wanted to prepare him for what was going to happen mm -hmm. when he hit school because mm -hmm. he automatically was going to start out different, mm -hmm. even if he went to the same school his whole mm -hmm. life. By the time he was in third grade, no mm -hmm. one would mock him because mm -hmm. he had such a quick, sharp wit mm -hmm. that he would nail him back, you mm -hmm. know, ten times harder than mm -hmm. whatever they would say. You know, they'd make a leprechaun mm -hmm. joke, and he's like, mm -hmm. "Oh, really?" And then mm -hmm. he'd hit him back so hard. Yeah. Now, I don't know that that's necessarily the best way to raise your kid if you know that they have something different about them, because mm -hmm. it's they might think it's a little harsh that dad's saying these horrible things about them. But I, I don't know. There, I, I actually I think it did I have a motivation factor. I strangely find myself vaguely somewhat agreeing with you, at least in, uh, conceptually. <laughs> um, I think it's really important for us as parents, because I don't think we've done this enough, is to res raise our children to be resilient, to raise children who understand. You know, I mean, we're all trying to have our kids have you know high self-esteem, but let's make it real. You know, like I think you said earlier, not let's not just give them, you know, everybody an award, yes, you know, a trophy, because that, you know, mm -hmm. that's actually false self-esteem. Absolutely. Um, what I think it begs the issue of like, well, how do we raise kids who really, really feel strong about themselves? Give everybody a trophy? No, that's not working. Well, and you look around the world too. Mm -hmm. They say that in studies, mm -hmm. American children. Mm -hmm have some of the highest self-esteem on the planet mm -hmm. and some of the lowest test scores on the planet as far mm -hmm. as educationally, which means we're horrible at reading, we're horrible at math, we're horrible mm -hmm. at spelling. We feel really good about it, though. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I think, I think um, in our attempts 
to like this actually goes back to like we are part of a, um, a, a generation that is basically trying not to parent the way that we were parented. See, I thought she was um, going to say dying And any time off. you have a pendulum shift like that, you know, we grew up with, you know, corp I, when I went to school, there was corporal punishment. I, I actually, second grade, Miss uh, Swishman, um, you know, tied kids to chairs. Like, so there's been this whole paradigm shift. Wow. Are you out there, Mrs. Swishman? She's no longer with us. <laughs> But, yeah, because um, the kids all got together, tied man. her to a chair, and right. left her. <laughs> <laughs> but, but there's been this whole paradigm shift where we're trying not to be our parents and use this fear-based approach. So it went way over here, and we're like, okay, all our kids are amazing. Everything you do is amazing. Well, I know and that. And it's a super oh, over-inflated, and I, I used to call it like it's the Barneyification uh, of our uh, kids. Uh, uh, you know, <laughs> and it's not real, and our kids know it's not real, and that's why I think our kids no, do struggle. The, the, I think our they, kids. I, th kids I don't have... think all the kids do know that it's not real because right. I do think that are, there mm -hmm. are plenty of mm -hmm. kids, and I, I I'm in my thirties. I'm not uh -huh. that old, but I think mm -hmm. that there's a lot of kids coming up into adulthood right mm -hmm. now that when they get to work and their boss mm -hmm. yells at them because they're not doing a good job, mm -hmm. actually cop the attitude of. But don't you realize how amazing I am? How dare you insist I get off yeah, my butt right. and do something? I'm over right. here tweeting, leave me alone. Right, right. And I, so I think there is some cultural shift, like I was saying, that went all the way from here all the way over to there. And I, the, I read this really fascinating article once as a, a teacher many years ago. I'll never forget the title. And it said, basically, are we confusing self-esteem with narcissism? <laughs> and, I, and I think, you know, and I think that aptly puts it, and, and we just need to come back from that, you know, oh, you know, you are super amazing kiddo, and you're, you know, I'm so proud of you for putting your shoes on, you know. It's like, but don't we also have it, there's, uh, you know, a, a pendulum shift in our culture mm -hmm. where we've got things like, I'm going to use this example, a Tosh.0, oh, where he mm -hmm. has a whole television show that's dedicated toward making fun of people and mm -hmm. humiliating yeah, people. Yeah, absolutely. And, absolutely. We, get, and we, we get... Yep. pleasure out of that. Mm -hmm. We get pleasure mm -hmm. out of watching mm -hmm. uh, a bully. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. my and sense of humor I mean, is that's... usually very mocking too, so this is hitting a little close to home, thank you very much. <laughs> well, no, I... Ding dong! Okay, wait, and have any... Have you call any, me? Have, okay. Ding dong! <laughs> okay, so I know I was bullied. I'm trying to remember if I ever bullied anybody. I think I, I witnessed bullying and I didn't speak up. Well, you made yeah. fun of his skinhead. I... She did. You witnessed it. It's on tape. <laughs> Okay, uh, no. So when you take this to court, we'll bring in the bullied? DVD. Have you ever bullied or, or been bullied? See, come on, come on. By come that on. definition, I have, but it's always been my friends, and it's always been taken no, as but, okay, joking no, but around. With the intent of humiliating, having no. power over. But the things I mm -hmm. say, if you just, if someone decided, oh, I'm gonna say, you know, this is harassment uh -huh. or whatever, uh -huh. if you just wrote down the words that came out of my mouth. Mm -hmm. I look horrible mm -hmm. in those situations, mm -hmm. even though it was a give and take mm -hmm. at the time. If you mm -hmm. just quoted me, mm -hmm. I look like a POS. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't think I'm generally a bully. I don't think mm -hmm. I would say that, but I'm, I'm trying to say that I've never done that, and I try to think about my little brother who <laughs> well, that's will say different. stuff. Come but boy, on. I'll tell you, if I, had, if I had my phone with me, I could show mm -hmm. you some of the text messages that he sent to me, and you would be, like, you would be appalled. You'd be like, I can't believe a person said that to somebody else <laughs> but you know yeah. which is probably a response to, to you know mm -hmm. some well, things I did as a that's child where or something but. you were saying it's not all black and white that's mm -hmm. where a lot of gray is you mm -hmm. know is with the intent it's like um, that whole thing with mm -hmm. uh, the locker room situation for the Miami Dolphins. Remember that the guy that said, "Oh, that's a, this is a big one out in the, uh, out yes. in the media." The bullying uh, mm -hmm. example, you know, claiming to be bullied. Are you aware of that one, Deb? Do you know what he's talking about? The no. Miami Dolphins. Oh, we better like team. let you tell the story. Well, there was. I'm really, I, you know, I don't can't imagine when was the last time I saw the Miami Dolphins. Hmm, let me see. Hmm. Oh no, but Never! it was a huge. It was a huge this was a, story. But this I mean, was a oh, new okay. story okay. that you know, okay. went beyond ESPN. Okay. Um, but anyway, this one guy claimed to have been mm -hmm. being bullied by other teammates, one mm -hmm. in particular, mm -hmm. in the locker room. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to bother with names because you're not going to know who they are from that Thank anyway. And it doesn't, well, and it doesn't really matter. It's not right, important. right, right. It's the, irrelevant. The point is, mm -hmm. he's saying, you know, this guy's saying racial mm -hmm. things to me. He's mm -hmm. making all these threats of physical mm -hmm. harm to mm -hmm. me. And he, he threatened to, to rape the guy's sister. 
Yeah. That was one of the, um, the And he threats. also threatened to defecate in his mouth. Mm -hmm. Okay, one. that's enough detail. Yeah. But the response from the other guy is, that's how we all talk to each other in that locker room. Mm -hmm. He's the one person not taking it. And you mm -hmm. figure 24 to 30 year mm -hmm. old men mm -hmm. that are all pumped up, uh -huh. you know, with testosterone and yep. all that, you know. Okay. That is, I have a it, I'm not saying it makes it okay, but okay. that is how they talk to each and other. And there, there was a backlash culturally mm -hmm. in the media mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. this whole thing mm -hmm. that this guy, the guy mm -hmm. who complained about mm -hmm. being bullied, was basically, um, mm -hmm. I'm, always gonna, I'm just going to try to use a derogatory term, but basically that, that they were blaming him. Mm -hmm. for this whole thing that oh he should have just taken it like, like a he's man a, okay, he's a that, 300 that pound is, man he I should mean, be able to handle I, it i just want to say when we perpetuate those types of responses or attitudes um, um little boys start hearing that on the playground when they cry you know oh boys don't cry it's the same thing it's disconnecting us especially men from feelings well, and emotions, I think it. I, I think if any, it adds to desensitization. desensitization. Well, and let me let me just say one more thing that I think is really important. I think she bullied me. She put her finger up. I think we got to let her go <laughs> up. I mean, we 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 laid this the story out for her. She no, wasn't no. Okay. aware of it. <laughs> okay, so let me just see because I think this is really important. Um, what makes you feel intimidated or humiliated? Um, or disempowered may be very different than, you know, what might make me feel intimidated or humiliated. Um, so, you know, there are things people can say to me personally that don't make me, don't humiliate me because I'm a resilient person and whatever my weaknesses are, I actually would, you know, um, use as a badge of, of courage or strength so that protects me because I know that what that person is saying is not necessarily about me that's actually about them so I have you know some strengths that would protect me that, like literally that doesn't affect me because I know that's about you so but so it's a very individual thing we'll see so obviously everybody else on the football team was not as, as sensitive that touched him, that made him feel humiliated. Um, so that's real. Well, and then it turned out he had a history of mm -hmm. everyone's against him, the world's against him, like mm -hmm. through high school and mm -hmm. college mm -hmm. too. It seemed like All right, you, wait, he, wait, he, wait, no, wait, 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 The flip side of this, okay, uh -huh. is that Richie Incognito, the guy who was doing the bullying, yeah. he has a history of being a bully, being a really horrible there you bully. Go. Oh yeah, there and a lot go. of other teams. They kicked him out. So yes, yeah. they did. And other teams he was on said mm -hmm. he was just kind of a jerk. I mean, mm -hmm. straight mm -hmm. up. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, I'm not saying that. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying there's, you know, a lot mm -hmm. to the story and, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, well, I just think I just think that when we come out and we've got a story of a guy that's mm -hmm. being bullied in something that's really high profile like mm -hmm. that, it's, you know, there's no need to sit there and blame the victim, mm -hmm. which is what they did. I mean, oh, there's yeah. a lot of victim yes. blaming yes. on that, on well, that yes. guy. Yep. And what it does is it sends a bad message to our children yes. that they yes. can't speak up anymore. They mm. can't say, wait a minute, right. that's not Especially okay. Especially for our so boys. Public. Suck it up. You know, and that big, was so big right. boys don't cry. Now, the flip you know? side of that, another story we had talked about, mm -hmm. and we only have a little bit of time left, mm -hmm. but I'll just throw this out there, was there was a football team mm -hmm. that was a high school football team that was sued for bullying a team that they beat because they beat them by such a high score, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. And the parents of the losing team sued mm -hmm. saying it was bullying, even though the other team had put in their second string and then third string mm -hmm. players because they were like, well, let's give them a chance to play because, mm -hmm. you know, they were trying mm -hmm. not to rack up more. Right. And there was a lawsuit for that. And, right. you know, that seems like the other side where mm -hmm. it's like, okay, one person was having these threats made to mm -hmm. him. These kids played a game and didn't just lay down so that the other team felt mm -hmm. self-esteem. Mm -hmm. And that's that pendulum thing you were talking mm -hmm. about. It's like, you, it's such a extreme to the... Mm -hmm. So I, we'll see your side. I, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that, um, I mean, I am, my personal conviction is we need to keep the legal system out of our lives. Mm -hmm. We need to step up and learn how to, you know, in a situation like that, you're talking about poor sportsmanship. 
you know, so let's have a dialogue about that. Let's establish some a community agreement on what's okay. And some, you know, some organizations do this. What can we take away and teach? What can we change? How can we as a community come together and, and, and tackle this issue? Well, didn't we have a president mm -hmm. nearly 25 years ago mm -hmm. that said we should be a kinder, gentler nation? <laughs> All right. Wasn't he mocked? I mean, in retrospect, mm -hmm. that's, not, um, that's not looked mm -hmm. at as being something like, hey, you know what? Yeah. He's right. We should become a kinder, gentler nation. Well, no. Right. Well, well, I think when you put it in very simplistic terms, it looks like that whole Barney, Barneyification, as I refer to it is. And I do believe, yes, we need to be kinder. We need to, we're on, we are underneath um, such incredible uh, economic stress, uh, 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 political polarization. Um, our educational institutions are stressed to the max and they're underneath the gun. So yeah, digging deeper to understand more, like, but in, like yeah, let's be kinder, but let's, let's do that by talking, by um, listening. It's hate, not something you, know, you just do. Like, I hate yes. to interrupt, but yes. I, I see by the clock over okay. Don's shoulder there that uh, we're gonna have to wrap it up, so I figure I'll... Uh, mm -hmm. Say a yeah, quick so wrap up for each of us or whatever. Well, we should right probably let Deb have a final word. Oh, yeah, boy. let her have the final word. Really? So oh, look okay. directly in the camera. Okay. Don't be shy. Okay, I'm We're just putting her on the spot. Okay, I'm going to put my notes away. I honestly I'm just think speak that from we've, the heart here. we've barely scratched the surface. Oh, yes. I think that at mm -hmm. some point we should mm -hmm. have you come back mm -hmm. so we can continue this conversation sure. because I'm sure there's still a lot more that you mm -hmm. want to say. I know there's more that Don and I both want to say. So this will not be the last time we invite you in. Great. Thank you. But, um, uh, thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to come on and um, discuss it's this issue. Uh, yes. It is very important. Um, uh, I'd like to say to the community that um, there are um, a number of individuals and organizations who really want to work on this issue as a community. Um, I know Sam Maskell um, from the Rockingham um, Free Public Library, myself, uh, Mimi Yan. Um, uh, let's see, I'm trying to remember, um, uh, Christine Jordan, Thaddeus Buckley from the Bellis Falls Police Department, and uh, Sharman Handy, uh, and a few other community members um, did two presentations um, this past winter, and we had um, excellent community participation. But we'd like to do more to have some more dialogues, community dialogues specifically. What you can do as a parent. You know, how can you support your kid? What your rights are? So those are some things, you know, if you want to get involved, contact Greater Falls Connections. We would love to have you be a part of the conversation. What can we do to support our schools? I think that's really important and create a bridge there. Because just like we're underneath a lot of pressure, they are as well and they are trying. Um, so yes, um, also we've got a lot of great things, activities coming up. Please visit our website, and we like will, Greater Falls Connections on Facebook. And we will mention them in future episodes because yep. we're involved in one of the groups that's helping Plan. come up with some of these plans. Yeah. And before we go, I want to say please email us at we got daddy issues at yahoo.com mm -hmm. with any topics you'd like us to cover, with mm -hmm. any comments or questions you'd like us to discuss on the show. Mm -hmm. um, but time is running short, so... Well, we'd like to thank Deb for, for coming and being thank our you. guest today. Um, as you can tell, we're lucky to have uh, Deb in our community to... Uh, She's not a daddy, but she can help us uh, with and the uh, Daddies rock. I'm very supportive of um, dads. I think we need more dads at homes and less dads in prison. So for this week, I'm Craig Jakes. Deb Witkus. I'm Don Trettler. And wait till your father gets home. Exactly. <laughs>